here wants to make 10k a month, 50k a month. This is literally the most important thing that anyone needs to hear. It's really going to make you look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself. She took 30 clients with her. They took $50,000 from her. I lost half a million dollars. Do I really want this? This is what makes us good entrepreneurs. I had to deal with my entire business just going completely downhill. This is one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my entire career. That actually f***ed me up. You guys want to make a million bucks? This is all the shit I had to do. You got to have scars if you want to be successful. Let me read this for you guys. In nature, cleansing storms are big and frequent events that clear out all of the overgrowth that's accumulated during good times. Forests need these storms to be healthy. Without them, there would be more weak trees and a buildup of overgrowth that stifles other growth. The same is true for companies. Bad times that force cutbacks, so only the strongest and most essential employees or companies survive, are inevitable and can be great, even though they seem terrible at the time. Now, this quote might feel like it's coming from someone non-important or irrelevant, but it's actually coming from someone that's worth $19 billion, Ray Dalio. And this is one of his core principles. Who here has read principles or knows what I'm talking about? The book principles. It's a really famous business book. And essentially this multi-billionaire who's worth $19 billion has a list of things that he lives by. And this is one of them. That leads me into this. Business is hard, guys. Like business is going to challenge you. It's going to force you to level up. It's going to be extremely scary. It's going to make you face all of your demons. And it's really going to make you look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, do I really want this? And here's some bad news, guys. It's going to happen a lot. Whether you're brand new starting out, whether you are at 100K a month, whether you are at a billion dollars. This literally came right from a billionaire. The biggest companies in the world, Meta, Twitter, have just been laying off. Google have been laying off thousands of employees. So bad times are hard, yet they're also extremely important. This is what develops us as individuals. This is what makes us stronger. This is what makes us good entrepreneurs. This is what builds our entrepreneurial muscles. And without the hard times, we are just going to be weak. Good times create weak men and women. Hard times create strong men and women. Here's the truth, guys. You're going to get knocked down over and over and over and over and over again. I don't care if we're talking about me. I don't care if we're talking about Grant Cardone, who, by the way, in 2008, literally lost everything. He had to start all over again at the age of 50 or maybe now a little bit uh, 45. The most successful people that you see get knocked down. It's part of the process. And what this means for you might look a little bit different. Maybe it's all of your ads getting shut down. Maybe it's your clients getting poached and leaving. Maybe it's you being afraid to pick up the phone and call someone. Maybe it's you not having success and you're trying over and over again and the cold emails, the accounts keep getting blocked. That's the equivalent of getting punched in the face and getting knocked down over and over and over again. And for every single person, it's going to look different, but I will promise you one thing. It's going to happen for everyone and it's going to happen forever. Bad times will not go away. Hard times will not go away. And business is going to continue to challenge you no matter where you're at, no matter how good you are. Let me give you guys some examples of personal things that have happened to me. Okay. When I had over a hundred active clients, I had my entire business manager shut down during the, I think I had over 200 active clients during the uh, elections and we could not get ads back up. So for 200 active clients, I had to deal with my entire business just going completely downhill. Okay. This caused so much stress. I, I try to call, I think I got through like 70 clients. I try to personally call every single client. We had clients leave. We had clients threaten to sue us. We had clients that thought we were liars. We had clients that we're okay with it, you know, but it really hurt. Like this was a painful lesson. It taught me to diversify. It taught me to be proactive in communication with clients. It taught me to set expectations that, hey, this can happen when we're running ads. But nonetheless, it was extremely hard. I'll give you another story. Back when I was just starting out, I had a, an account manager, Lara, Lara Bignolti. She's a really nice person. She hopped on a call with a doctor and the doctor starts screaming at her, screaming, just belligerently screaming. Not in any way that is healthy. It's extremely toxic. She starts crying, 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 crying. That to me felt like, even though it's a small instance, it was like, holy fuck. It felt like I've caused this pain to this person, right? And it was extremely overwhelming. And it back then, I didn't know how to deal with it. You know, I've done a lot of inner work since then. I've done a lot of healing to be able to handle those situations, but I was paralyzed. I was like, I don't know what to do here. And I was driven by the money. So part of me wanted to side with a client because I was just starting out. I didn't have a big business but I knew it was the wrong thing to do. Luckily, thank God, I said, fuck the client. I sided with the account manager. 
But nonetheless, it was a really, really hard situation. Let me tell you guys another story. This is one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my entire career. Biggest mistakes. This, I, I, this is me. You know what's crazy about business? Sometimes you punch yourself in the face. Sometimes you knock yourself down. You're getting in your own way. You're hurting your own results. You self-sabotage. You know what I did? I, I took my entire team out to dinner and two of the account managers were complaining. And they were being really, uh, they, they were also crossing the line. But nonetheless, I shouldn't have done what I'm about to share with you. On my way out, I said, I want you guys to know, and this is one of the biggest things that I regret in my entire career. I've, I vowed to myself to never say this again to anyone. And I told them very quietly, which made it worse, made it seem like I was controlled and, and thought this through. And I said to them, uh, you are replaceable. And even if that is true, you never want to say that to someone. You know what ended up happening? One of them was actually Lara, the, the girl that was screamed at. She quit. And the other one, Nancy, she quit and she took 30 clients with her. And I just kept seeing the, the our retention rate just started dropping. I was like, what is happening? These clients like me. They're getting good results. Why are they leaving? Little by little. You know what happened? She told everyone. She told all of the clients that she was managing. She had about 40, 50 clients. She said, hey, if you come with me, I'll do everything that they're doing uh, a third of the price, $500 instead of $1,500 or like $750 instead of $2K. I don't know the exact details. We lost about 30 clients within a month, which was huge. It was extremely stressful. It really forced me to, again, take a hard look all while trying to balance my health, trying to balance my family life, trying to balance my mental sanity, trying to, uh, you know, just live life, right? One of the biggest mistakes that I made, it cost me a lot of money, okay? And it really hurt people. I should have not done that. That was, uh, that was, that was a big mistake. I'll tell you guys another story. I don't know exactly when, but at one point, my business manager got hacked and uh, I didn't have two-factor authentication set up. I didn't have any of the right proper security system set up. They took $50,000 from us. You know how, you know, you know how like, I can't even describe the feeling of someone essentially logging into your account and just taking money and you can't do anything about it. You just have to message Facebook support. It's almost like you're just watching money draw. It's almost like if you invested in the stock market and you just see it crashing and you just can't do anything about it. And, and it's like, but even then you can sell here. You can't, you just watch it burn. You just watch it burn. The reality is, guys, I was watching my ad accounts just drain $50,000. And you know what? I only got $40,000 back from Facebook. I lost $10,000 on something that I couldn't even control. Back when crypto was crashing, I had $1.4 million in, uh, in Anchor. In, in, and I had way more in uh, Luna or whatever it was called. I don't even remember. I've like literally blocked it out of my mind. I, I lost half a million dollars. Gone. Poof. Gone. That's extru that, that is that is life changing money. With five hundred thousand dollars, you could live for a whole, like you could live for a long time. Like you could, that that is a like life changing sum of money just gone. And these these are all different types of events. It's not just financial. Sometimes they they force you to face your own insecurities, your own fears. I'll tell you guys another story. This is probably one of the scariest ones. About a year and a half, two years ago, someone that has a lot of mental health issues sent me a death threat. And you know, it's interesting. I talked to Alex about it, Alex Ramosi, and he said, get used to it. <laughs> Side note, but um, you know how hard it is when you're, you're trying to pour your heart, create all this content, help all these people. Like, I know you guys have all invested to be here, but it's like, I still try to give you guys my all every single time. I really try to give you guys my all no matter what. And for people that, and it's okay if you're like, Joel, F you. It's okay if you're like, Joel, uh, you know, I don't, I don't follow what you do. I think whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't care if you hate me, but for someone to threaten you and tell them you that they're going to kill you and your family, if you don't wire them $4 million and they're posting you on their stories every single day, here's how crazy it was. He ended up getting arrested. Um, they thought that, well, he thought that I owned Jim launch, Alex Ramosi, go high level, my agency. He thought I owned all these people. And I was this like ma puppet master and he, he literally sent me an invoice for $4 million, which is fucking ridiculous. But I was not prepared to deal with that. I didn't, I've never dealt with that. I've never dealt with that. It was extremely scary. It really, really rocked my world. Like I had to go to therapy for it. I had to literally talk to someone to just break down what happened. Like, am I going to be okay? Because when someone, and it's not just like a one-time threat. It was every single day. They kept posting on their stories and tagging me and tagging me and tagging me. All in red. I had a guy one time, never signed up as a client. Never was a, didn't even, the guy doesn't, never engaged with me ever. Called 
the police department, the police department, and filed a false report on me. I had detectives calling me. The detective of the police department called me and said, hey, tell me about this. Now, obviously, nothing happened. But the first time I got a call from a detective, it was like, what is going on? I don't even know this guy, and he's trying to cause harm. So it's not just financial. I remember during that period, I was frozen. I was paralyzed. I could not get out of bed. I could literally not get out of bed. I was literally just in shock. And you know what? That, that actually fucked me up hardcore for a while because I closed off as a human being. This happened around 2021. And for about a year, I burned a lot of relationships. I made some major mistakes because I thought people were out to get me. I truly put my guard up to protect myself, which is what like most human beings would do, right? If someone tries to hurt you, you put guard up, protect yourself. But I, I, I went too extreme. I went to the to the other end of the spectrum. And I closed people off that were really important for me. I stopped trusting people. I made some major mistakes, which caused more pain, more issues, more getting punched in the face. And it was really hard. Like it's, it's been, and and you know, what's crazy guys. We talk about this all the time. Most of you guys say, Hey, the thing, biggest thing holding me back is fear. And we talk about mindset. This is the hardest part. It's Hey, how do you get back up when someone tells you to fuck off on the phone on a cold call or 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 when someone someone said replies to your cold email and says you're a scammer or when, where you can't even get your ad, your accounts up you keep facing roadblock after roadblock after roadblock after roadblock because your emails are getting shut down how do you continue to deal with the mindset of continuing to keep pushing forward that is the name of the game so when people talk about mindset that it's not like woo woo rah yeah Say, I, you know, Tony Robbins, it's not that, you know, that's temporary. That's fleeing. Cool. You feel good in the moment. And then what, when you get punched in the face, do you have the mental fortitude to stay, to hang in, to keep pushing through? And it's not just about the money guys. It's not just about your clients leaving. Most of the time it's about you facing your own demons. It's about you facing your own limits as a human being. For example, after I got that call from the detective, which threw me into a negative downward spiral for about a year, I fucked up a lot of relationships. I, I, there's relationships that I've had to go back and, and try to make amends with. And you know, what's crazy now I'm a much stronger entrepreneur because I know, I know that people aren't trying to, there are some people that are out to get me. And there's some people that aren't out to get me. There's some people that truly genuinely care about me and have my best interest in their heart. I've learned to see both sides. I've learned to be able to analyze. Let's go through some of those big issues. I've learned that I'm never going to rely on one platform ever again, not just Facebook. I know how to run YouTube ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, and Facebook and Instagram ads now. Clients screaming at me. I know to set good expectations now. I know that literally I have Google Authenticator on every single platform. So if you want to hack me, you can't just like get a text. You have to literally go on one device to get that code that expires every five seconds. I know that most death threats if, if are, are empty, actually. Most death threats are actually empty. And I know with people threatening with lawsuits or things like that, like the world is not out to get you, even though it feels like it is. You guys are probably wondering, like, what the hell does this have to do with anything? But here's the key, guys. Here's the key. You must be crazy enough to get back up every fucking time. Yes, yes. Fuck yes, motherfuckers, yes, yes. You really need to be crazy enough. There's got to be a little bit of like, I'm crazy. I'm going to just keep, you keep getting punched in the face. I'm going to hang in there. My emails get keep getting shut down for the hundred thousandth time. I'm going to f- keep trying to make it happen. You got to be crazy enough. The, biz, the, the, the people at the very top had to be crazy in some ways to keep getting back up because the reality of business is that it's going to keep punching you in the face over and over and over again. And sometimes you're going to be the one punching yourself in the face due to your own limits, due to your own insecurities, due to your own fears. You guys have to keep getting back up. And it's not a want. It's not a, yeah, I, I, you, it's a must. It, you, it, it's a must have. You must get back up. There's no other option. There's no other way. And you have to also, and this is the really scary part. You have to also accept the fact that you're going to get punched in the face. It's hard. Business is hard. And again, for everyone, there's levels to it. For Google, it means losing 20,000 employees, which guys, they've probably invested so much money to find those people. And they're probably extremely good people. Like the people that work at Google, like they're probably some of the smartest people in the world. They lost them in a heartbeat. The only thing that affects everything, culture, morale, uh, uh, the fear of other employees, everything. It's really, 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 really hard. 
that's the top of the game. Starting out, I was afraid to literally talk to prospects. I was afraid to talk to my clients. I was afraid to literally just talk to people. That's getting punched in the face. You got to keep getting back up. I remember the first time I made a cold call. I don't know if I told you guys this story, but I literally panicked. I, I panicked. And you know what's crazy? I picked up the phone again, made another call, even though my heart was literally racing. Like, I don't know if you guys have felt this way. Maybe you haven't, but I felt like my heart was racing. Picked up the, I was like, got to pick up the phone again. Got to pick up the phone again. So it, it, it's not about like losing money or losing clients. It could be as small as, and actually it could be as big as facing your fear of getting told no. It could be as big as facing your fear of asking for money from your clients. But you must, guys, you must be crazy enough to get back up every fucking time. And then one really important thing must happen. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. A lot of people make this mistake. Now, you get pushed down in business. Maybe, and by the way, sometimes it's not business. Sometimes it's life. Maybe sometimes your business is going well, but you're having health issues. Maybe sometimes your business is going amazing, but you're having family issues. Maybe... <laughs> It's not always business. It's actually life. That's, this is really a conversation about life, except business is going to amplify it because it demand, to win, winning demands all of you. As Tim Grover says, winning demands all of you. So yeah. when all of you is pulled into a business, you're much more vulnerable. Someone at a stable nine to five job, they're having some issues. They can deal with them after work. You guys don't, can't, don't ha- you can't afford to give business your all and deal with everything. So it puts you, it's much harder. You guys signed up for a harder journey, which again, the harder the journey, the greater the reward, right? The harder yes. the journey, the greater the reward. You guys want to make a million bucks. You guys, this is all the shit I had to do and more. This is just some examples that I came up with. And actually the hardest ones were me just facing my own inner demons, my own insecurities, my own fears. They weren't even on this list. These are just some tangible things to show you guys, some hard moments in my business. But you guys want to make millions? You guys got to be willing to go through million dollars worth of pain. Yes. You guys want to make a billion dollars? Do you know that Elon Musk has accepted the fact that he's not going to have a good relationship with his children? How he's suffering. He... Elon Dude, Musk is suffering. You, you, you want to be Elon Musk? You also have to be the man who essentially has a terrible relationship with his children. It's, it's sacrifice. He's got to go through... $100 billion worth of pain or whatever he's worth. And it doesn't look always the same way. Mark Zuckerberg literally has to go in front of the government and testify. Like if any of us had to do that, we would shit our pants. If we had to go testify in front of the world, because it's all on national television, on Instagram, on social media, we would all shit our pants. That is insane amount of fear that we would have to deal with. The amount of shady shit. You know, you know what's crazy? You want to be Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs also exploits people in third world countries. He got kicked out of Apple. He, you got to remember that. Like you look, these these extremely rich people also have paid the price in some extremely unethical ways. They're quite literally exploiting pe- like children in minds that are going to affect them for the same material that makes your laptops, your iPhones, your Tesla batteries, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not saying we should ha- we shouldn't have those things, but what I'm saying is. There's a price to pay no matter what level you're at. And the bigger the reward, the bigger the price. And the bigger the reward, the more vulnerable you're going to be to all these things. So what must happen next? You got to get up like we talked about. You have to be crazy to get up. But then something really important needs to happen. You have to go to fucking war. You have to go to battle. You must go on offense. It is extremely tempting to play defense, 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 but defense supports games. It doesn't win games. You could have the best defense in the world. If you don't score the ball, you still lose. Fuck your defense. You guys are playing too timid. You guys are playing too uh, reserved. You guys are playing too slow. You guys are overthinking things. Uh, You guys are, are, are paralyzed. No more defense. No more preparation. No more wanting things to be perfect. Once you get back up, you have to play. You have to get on the offensive. You have to push things forward. That is the only cure. One of my favorite sayings is action cures anxiety. Action cures anxiety. Action also cures fear. Action also cures lack of confidence. Action cures a lot of things. You have to go to war and get on offense. You cannot, if you actually think about war, at some point, you can't just keep retreating little by little and just hope 
that the enemy doesn't take over. At some point, you have to go after the enemy. And the enemy is not a person, guys. It's not like trying to kill a human being. The enemy could be your own mind playing games with you. Yes. The enemy could be the enemy could be your fear of getting told no. The enemy could be your email accounts continuing to get blocked. You guys have to fuck your defense. And look, I believe emotions are very, very important. I'm, I'm, I'm not dissing emotions, but it's extremely easy for your emotions to take over when you're vulnerable. It's extremely easy for you to get paralyzed. For example, I... I was in bed. The first time I lost a client, guys, I remember perfectly. I was literally paralyzed for days. I could not get out of my bed. I was in utter, utter, like just, I was done. I could not handle the the the, the emotion that came with it. And at, at that point, it would have been better to just go numb and just keep pushing forward. Because what can I do? The client is lost. Maybe you can't go to sleep. Maybe you have anxiety. Maybe you're fine. Doesn't it, it, it's more about understanding what this looks like for you. It's not about this is these aren't all general, these are just examples. And it might be completely different for you. For you, it might be something to do with your parents or with your family or with pressures from other friends. It might look completely different from you, for you than for me. You guys have to, in moments of utter defeat, in moments where you've been punched in the face and knocked down, you have to get back up, collect collect yourself, and move forward. Most people, what ends up happening, what ends up happening is most people try to prevent themselves from getting punched again. This is what I, this is the thing that messes most people up. Instead of trying to punch back and move forward, they say, "Hey, how can I make it so that I don't get punched again?" They play defense. Hey, how how can I make it so that I'm safe? Instead of saying, "I'm going to push forward and create a life for myself that is so successful." And therefore, I will be safe. Bed Bath and Beyond just went bankrupt, like officially out of business. Like the, even the biggest companies in the world, guys. It's not. It's not. It's everyone at all times. It's a battle. Business is a battle. It's it's it's, it's a battle. And there's there's times of peace. And there's times of war. And if you get knocked down, it's time for war. There's no longer peace time. You have to be a wartime entrepreneur. You have to go to battle and destroy your enemies. And for most of you guys, your enemies is your mind. It's your fear. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's other things. It, it, it looks different for everyone, but you have to go to battle and destroy your enemies. The big thing, guys, no successful entrepreneur got Thanks, there guys. without some some scars, without some wounds. They got arrows on their back. I was listening to Patrick Bet David the other day, one of his reels, and he said, when I was succeeding in my city, I was a nice guy. Everyone liked me. I didn't have any competitors. I was the only one in my city. When I was succeeding in my state, California or whatever he was, wherever he was at, the people around him started to question, you know, turn on him. Once he started to win it on a national level, people started coming after him. So you got, you got to have wounds and you want to have, you got to have scars if you want to be successful. And it only makes you better. Like the best part about this is all these moments teach you the lessons that you need to learn specifically you, everyone's lessons are different. But the, these moments teach you the lessons that you need to learn in order to get to the next level. So you want to get to the next level? You guys, who here wants to make 10K a month, 50K a month, 100K a month? Show of hands. 500K a month, a million a month. Who here? Okay, you got to learn the lessons, whatever that looks like for you. You have to learn the lessons. And in order to learn the lessons, you're going to have to go to battle. I think it resonated with everybody. I think it's really good to hear you get vulnerable because I think sometimes we look up to you as like the guy who did it all. And then for you, you get to come in here and be like, hey guys, I'm not perfect. I have this really bad track record of shit that happens get over it, push through it. It really like reaffirms us that, you know, we can do it too. You know, a lot of people say it's not okay to cry. I think it's totally okay to cry, man. If you need to cry, I cry a lot. You know, I think the strongest people in the world cry a lot. Tony Robbins, Jordan Peterson. Um, I promise you, you guys look up to Andrew. Uh, some, of, some of you may look up to Andrew Tate. I promise you that guy was crying. I promise you, you gotta be afraid. You don't have to do it publicly, but you gotta, everyone, everyone has those moments, man. It's human. What happens when a baby comes out, starts crying? It's human. I think it's actually more, more courageous to, to face. When I say face your demons, I mean that, you know, like, um, also a quick hack for you guys. You, this is totally side note, but if you do cry and you feel your shit, it goes away. <laughs> so if you need to have a moment just to feel it and then process it, it gets easier. And it's not about not being a savage, you know, it's about understanding where you're at and uh, putting yourself in a position to win. So again, when I said, fuck your emotions, it's not a matter of not feeling your emotions. It's about saying, okay, cool. I'm going to feel my emotions. I'm going to have my moment. For example, you know what? You want to know what a better reaction would have been when the guy called the police on me? 
better reaction would have been, I'm going to take one to two days, maybe a, maybe a full two days even. I'm going to take one to two days to just relax, feel my shit, deal with my emotions. And then on Monday, I'm going to come back and I'm going to be a fucking animal and I'm going to destroy my enemies. That would have been a better response. But you know what I did instead? I paralyzed for weeks. And I let that experience change my entire identity in a bad way for about a whole year. So a better resp- I'm not saying don't, when I say fuck your emotions, I don't mean quite literally. I mean, uh, I think a better more detailed explanation would be feel your emotions for a period of time, recollect yourself, and then go back to war. Don't just stay in this never ending loop of like, oh my God, this is happening. I can't believe it. Why is this happening? Get a snap out. After you felt it, after you took a step back, snap out of it and take 10 steps forward, you know? So guys, um, it's uh, time for war the next 30 days. The key to all this is how do you b- balance both? Like, how do you bring out the animal? How do you bring out the savage while also being a really good person and really kind and really empathetic? How do you bring both energies? Sergio is probably one of the best. Like, LeBron James does this very well, for example, compared to like Kobe Bryant, LeBron, uh, Michael Jordan. Like, those guys burned relationships to get to where they are, which is fine too. They wanted, they, that was their track but like lebron for example has been able to accomplish so much without sacrificing those relationships relationships while maintaining uh his own internal core peace because he's good with who he is he doesn't have to battle anyone you know um and i think that that's ultimately the key but at the same time lebron wants to fucking win he's it's both you know who is the best example of being able to do both at the same time it's sergio and guess what sergio never had to learn this lesson because he's good. He's had to learn other lessons. For example, Serge has had to learn the lesson of overextending himself because he wants to serve everyone. And then he overcommits. He says yes to everyone. And then he lets people down, not because he wants to. He would do everything to not let you down. But he ends up inevitably letting people down because he's maxed out. His cup is too full. If you fill up the, the cup and you just keep putting, putting water, it's going to start uh, dripping, you know? So... It's about understanding which lessons you have to learn. It's like in the end, if, if you continue to get back up, if you continue to go to war to win, things are working for you, you know? As long as you continue getting back up, which is remember what I said, that's, that's where most people fail is they get knocked down and then they get paralyzed. They keep playing defense.